Here's the top five mistakes people make when moving to Microsoft 365. If you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime, where we help organizations save time for their employees to be more efficient and to improve well-being. Happening to use Microsoft 365 where it's the right fit. If you're interested in working together, we've got some great programs that are available now. Check out one of the links in the description below. So number one is moving like for like. So if you're new into Microsoft 365, you've probably got an on-premise shared drive where you're moving stuff over, or you've been on Google and moving over. And if you just lift and shift, as the saying goes, if the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result, if you just move all your files over without tidying them up, without thinking about where they're going to live, without thinking about discovery, without using some of the new apps and tools in the Microsoft ecosystem, if you just move everything usually into one new SharePoint site, have all the same permissions that you had before, what's going to change? Nothing. You might benefit from some co-authoring, but actually if you just lift and shift and haven't bothered training anybody, then no one even knows that you can do that. Similar to that is mistake number two, which is not thinking teams first. Microsoft have got loads of stuff hanging around. They basically build their products for enterprises, but then make them available to small businesses and to individuals. And so they never get rid of anything because they don't want to get told off by one of their big customers that they've removed something that they've had for ages and it's broken. So loads of stuff hang around and such as like people used to set up loads of different SharePoint sites, but that was before Microsoft Teams came out. Now, if you, every time you set up a Microsoft team, it sets up a SharePoint site for you, technically a Microsoft 365 group. If you want to know more about the architecture of Teams, then check out this video next. But not thinking Teams first is going to over clutter your environment. People will lose stuff. They won't know that it's in a SharePoint site in the team if you might have not even updated your procedures to say, well, actually go and save it here. Well, actually, if people are collaborating in the team and then share the file, it's creating a different version. They don't realize and things get lost. It's just a mess but you're not alone. Most companies are going to see have exactly the same issues and you can get around them by thinking teams first. Mistake number three, along the same line, just thinking that Microsoft Teams is just for calling and chat, which causes you to set everything up in the wrong way. People get their job done. They can work remotely with Microsoft Teams. It's been great whilst people have had to transition to working from home or hybrid working. But unless you've actually restructured and work with Microsoft Teams like it was Slack, if you never use Slack, getting away from internal email, putting all your files and all internal communications into one large team where anybody could pull someone else into a conversation or remove people from a conversation and just get some work done, but work in an open environment, that's going to be your third biggest mistake. Mistake number four, again, iterating through these, is working in the same way that you used to work. So if you're still sending loads of internal emails and you haven't transitioned into using Teams channels for internal collaboration, not Teams chats, because that helps lose things and keeps things in silos. If you're still using internal email, you're going to be slower than your competition if they've moved everything into free flowing, open in communication using Microsoft Teams channels. So mistake number four, working the same way that you've always worked without embracing some of the new technology. And mistake number five, again, very similar, using email as your inbox rather than using some of the new task management tools. So Microsoft Planner is the go-to app for shared tasks. Yes, it's got some of its downsides, but it's very accessible. It's in your subscription already and is the go-to place to make tasks visible Anything that you've assigned to someone, no matter what plan they've used, although there is some nuance about how best to set up Planner across an organization, which if you want some help, happy to have a chat if you use the link in the description below. Everything feeds through. If you've assigned something to somebody, all of their tasks, where no matter where it's assigned to them, will flow through into their view and they can see everything they need to do. Get out of email, get into Teams, and get into planner. If you'd like me to make a video on anything we've covered today in more depth, then let me know in the comments below. If you want to know more about the new Microsoft Planner, check out this video next. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever new videos come out, currently coming out every Monday.